I know a little bit about Carl, so I'll tell you a little bit about it. So first, of course, I am I'm Daniel, and I am. Um, this is where you find me. I work for Wolf SSL these days, uh, and I do curl support full time, and I do curl full time uh, all days. I'll get back to that a little bit. So um, today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about. Uh, I want to talk about how curl started, a little bit how we grew, and what happens, a little bit the situation right now, maybe what the future might look like, and some of some of what we've done in curl recently. I actually wanted to give you some, you know. Uh, some fun stuff you can do with curl that we have done over the over the last few years so i tried to dig up a little collection of things we've done and it ended up so much so i just you know crammed it all in and, and I'll, I'll show you uh, uh i think it was actually kind of fun uh, and if you have any questions i i don't know exactly it's hard for me to to actually detect that you have questions while i talk but feel free if i uh, if you have anything so try to interrupt me or you wait until the end and we get to all the questions afterwards i'm not personally in a hurry at any time, particular time here but i guess you you are <laughs> or at least we can't drag on for for how long we want but uh, okay so just curl then is an open source project we do a command line tool and a library and we transfer data using internet protocols basically that's a the lofty sort of a vague thing that uh, when people ask me what curl does i try to say something like this and that usually doesn't help mere mortals to understand what it is but still that's that's what the curl project is and we're doing everything is on curl.se the website and related stuff <clears throat> so we started of course nothing uh, existed uh, once upon a time but uh, in this year when the movie <laughs> actually premiered in sweden i was working on an IRC bot um, open source thing and we uh, had it joining a an Amiga related channel actually and in that channel we had that bot doing botty things as, as you do in, in IRC and I wanted to add a currency translation service to that bot and in order to do a currency translation service or currency exchange service in, in the bot I had to download currency rates every now and then I mean, ideally, probably once every day or so. So I just had to get that little tool to download the currency rates of an HTTP site. And uh, I did. And we put it online, or at, at least it was actually the first thing I found was another tool that I started on. But anyway, it then went on. I renamed the tool I worked on twice. I added upload support. And in... March 1998, I released curl the first time, and it could do HTTP go for an FTP transfers download. It could actually upload FTP. I think it could some. I think it might have been able to do HTTP post. I'm not sure. I think it was a little bit broken, but that at least how we started. I think we were at some 2,000 lines of code already done. We started three with 300 back in late uh, 96, so it had already. Uh, grown substantially and that point in time that's the birth date of curl we, we i actually i think of march 20 1998 as the sort of the birth time and from that point in time we had it open source online and we started working on it people contributed patches i added features and we iterated like that and here's a little fun graph showing number of lines of code in curl since the early beginning on the leftmost side here you can see the the release there the uh, actually what was called 4.0 the one i did the first one because i kept the version number from the previous projects uh, and then up 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 and now totally we're all product code which is both the command line and the library it's at what 145,000 lines of code or something excluding blank lines actually so this is all code and comments so <laughs> i find it actually kind of amusing that it's so linear that the growth has been that steady over the years it's, it's a bit fascinating to me and it's yeah uh, it makes you curious how if we're going to be able to sustain that or keep that or, or are we going to flatline at some point um and we've also then added a lot of commit authors over the years so we started we switched to git in in 
2010. So this graph shows you the number of commit authors uh, from 2010, because previously we used CVS and it didn't really separate authors from committers. So it wasn't really a good way to, to sort of separate them. So commit authors are persons who actually write stuff that we merged into Git. So separate, well, different authors really. And as you can see, we're, we surpassed 1000 uh, unique authors a while ago. Most authors only ever submit a single commit once and never again, but that's fine. We are a lot of people helping out to make uh, curl what it is. And of course, the number of contributors then, that also includes people that help out uh, with advice, uh, uh, interpreting, interpreting and uh, interpreting uh, like protocol specifications, submitting bug reports and stuff like that, that doesn't necessarily have to be writing code. We are uh, way over 2,600 contributors since, uh, well, last month or so. Uh, and of course, this, I, I mentioned the command line tool. The command line tool is, of course, what is usually among us uh, uh, enthusiasts that might be the most uh, known thing that we produce. And the number of command line options, it started out with 24 uh, options back in 1998, and we're at 240, uh, 47, I think, 247 since a few days back. Uh, and as you can see, that's also a rather steady growth over time. Kind of a crazy amount of command line options now, actually. Um, but that all that growth, all that sort of adding things have really made it a feature packed package that now supports a lot of protocols and a lot of features and a lot of things that had turned it into this Swiss army knife of uh, internet transfers and HTTP and HTTPS in particular. So it, it really, can do a lot of things, but still focused on, or we're still doing internet transfers up and down with URLs as sort of the common denominator. And that's what we're trying to focus on. And of course, over this period of time, we, I mean, I started working on this at, in 1996. And at that time, we only had 250,000 websites on the internet. That's quite a lot, but today we have like 2 billion. So that's still a, a factor of 8,000. So we haven't really grown as much as the rest of the internet. But we created, or I created Curl, and, and we started this journey, I think, in, a, in the right time, right? So we could surf this wave of internet growth. So it, it was a, a lucky timing and, and a fortunate time to be there. And this, then, has really uh, made Curl into a component that is used in, well, not everything, but if your device is internet connected, there's a very uh, high likelihood or chance that it runs curl or rather libcurl, the library part. Yeah. And I tried to cram all as many different products as possible on this image, showing you sort of just the uh, versatility of, or, of where curl runs in. So it's basically in everything in servers, game consoles, you know, portable loudspeakers, uh, fridge TVs, operating systems, vehicles like uh, cars and motorcycles, and of course, in all the phones and tablets. And uh, it is in printers, set-top boxes, streaming things, and in popular big um, apps like Instagram, YouTube, Google Photos, uh, Spotify, all of that. And it's used by, uh, well, it, Facebook is not a device. Someone has pointed that out, but Facebook is a big user of curl as well on this side. So all of these devices use curl or libcurl. A lot of places we, and of course they do it because curl supports 26 different transfer protocols and uh, sort of rep a lot of them. Of course, many of them are not as frequently used as a few of the others like HTTP and HTTPS are by far the most popular ones. And it's easy to access uh, libcurl and curl because we have a lot of bindings usually provided by, I mean, volunteers or, or people from wherever. So you can use, you can get to libcurl powers from basically using any language you know or can even imagine. And you build curl and, and, and get its powers thanks to it using a lot of different third party dependencies up to 35 different ones uh, at this point in time, actually. So all these green boxes are possible third-party dependencies. 
that you can build curl to use. So a lot of them are mutually exclusive. So you have to pick one of them or and some of them are not. So there are a lot of different build combinations. And then also one of the sort of the key factors to why or how curl can run on all those platforms, all those different devices is because it's really highly portable. We have counted these 86 different operating systems that have run curl at some point or another. And that's pretty ridiculous amount. And, and <laughs> it's actually, I think this uh, list of operating systems is fun because it's really very few users can even, you know, recognize more than maybe a dozen or 20 of these, but there are a lot of operating systems and most of them can run curl. And of course it runs on, on all the different CP architectures that you can think of that is at least 32 bit. It doesn't actually build on 16 bit architectures or, or smaller. And of course, since uh, a while ago, it also runs on two planets because Curl was used in this um, the the Mars helicopter 2020 project or whatever it's called. You know, the Ingenuity um, helicopter on Mars. So uh, NASA has confirmed that Curl was used in that project. Kind of cool. All in all, then of course we count that as more than 10 billion installations of Curl or libcurl in 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 the world. Uh, it's a rough guesstimate. I'd say it's actually rather low counted. So it depends on how you want to count, but you know, a huge amount of curl in the world. Some some just fun, fun things that then had happened to thanks to it, this it being this, you know everywhere. It also showed up on this uh, curl command line uh, on the Nasdaq building of, uh, quite a few years ago now, uh, showing a command line, how you could order t-shirts. That's I think that's an IPO for that company. Uh, and, and why not this little fun thing, which is a curl command line on the Silicon Valley billboard, also a long time ago now. <laughs> Sorry for the little bit of blurry picture here, but I'm having just a bad photo of that. But uh, I think the most fun about this particular billboard, I, I mean, apart from having your product on a billboard in Silicon Valley being a, a really cool thing to do, uh, this command line, you know, it faked command line here showing a curl command line. It's, you know, as anyone who has ever used curl, you sort of react to this. What are they trying to do with this command line? It's totally bogus, made up fake command line. And I wrote a blog post about it at the time uh, and actually got a response from Dice and he, from the marketing director there who said he was uh, embarrassed and uh, apologized for his mistake. <laughs> kind of fun. Anyway, this this thing, you know, I'm, I'm, have sh we have shipped curl in so many places and, and the, the curl ships as open source, as, uh, as I've said already, and the, the license um, the curl license, which is an um, MIT sort of derivative, because we sort of changed a few words, but it's basically an MIT license. Uh, so it includes my email uh, address in there, and that ends up uh, in a lot of places because a lot of uh, products, devices, tools, applications, you know, they bundle that uh, license as part of some about window or third party licenses window somewhere. And that makes uh, it it's possible for users to find my email address. So I get a lot of <clears throat> fun emails. And, and here's one of my favorites from uh, a few years ago. So I got this email from someone who actually found my email address in his car. Uh, and he had a little bit of a problem with his GPS. So he decided he better email me and ask how, how to fix that. Uh, but I know I couldn't help him. I actually get quite a few things like this in particular about games and car things. Um, and usually, uh, no, I can't help them much. Another little fun thing about <laughs> curl being this uh, well used everywhere thing. Uh, this is a uh, Cisco router small business thing that a few years ago uh, turned out to have a vulnerability somehow. And they shipped an update to their source code and they made the source code I, it's an open source source code or at least this part they showed it the configuration and that was kind of fun because they fixed their vulnerability like this which is just check if curl is the user agent and then avoid doing what it was otherwise going to do 
Yes, it's completely lame, but it was fun for us to see. So why are all these companies using curl and libcurl in all these devices? I think you know, or can figure that out, but sure. We have a well-documented and established API and everything. So we, as I've sh shown you, we've, we've existed for a very long time, the, the whole project, and we turned 24 years old just a few days ago. Uh, we created libcurl, the library in the year 2000s, and examples that we created already when we sort of invented or designed the library for the first time, you can still run the same examples. The ABI and the API are rock solid and stable. We don't, we don't change it so you can upgrade and bring on your stuff from a very long time ago and it still works. And as I said, it works the same way pretty much everywhere. You can bring it on with you even when you change operating systems or architectures. And since it's open source, it's free both in spirit and in price mostly. Um, depending on if you want to pay for support or anything, but you can support it yourself if, if you want to. And uh, I call it immortal because, you know, you, the code is there. It doesn't go away. Even if, if all the authors would vanish, the code is there and for you to bring it on. <clears throat> and it's been proven to work like this and you can customize it. You can tweak it and build it exactly the way you want it. And it's been hardened and polished to, to do exactly what you want it to do. And the, the multiples, uh, the support of multiple pr protocols is also one of the key features because a lot of users are actually using more than the two primary ones. The two primary ones being HTTP and HTTPS. And of course, we are keeping up with the internet because uh, the internet doesn't stand still. Nothing, you know, nothing does. And and people sometimes ask me, so you work in Curl full time? What do you do all day? But th this is one of the reasons why I work on curl full time, right? Because everything is constantly evolving, moving, changing. We don't do things, we don't do internet transfers today the same way we did five years ago. A lot of things have changed since then and we need to keep up and maintain that to, to make sure that we do internet transfers the way everyone wants them to be done and in a secure, safe, effective way, modern way. And then why did, it, why did I, we ship curl as open source <clears throat> well for me there was never any alternative and and um, it was a hobby project i i was only going to do uh, currency rates anyway so if you want to download currency rates why not do it open source and i wanted to contribute back and be one of those cool uh, open source authors that i've seen uh, in the wild already back then and if i hadn't done it open source we would never have gotten to this level of success or or um features and functionality, I would have gotten bored and, and given up a long time ago. And, and of course, it wouldn't have been this portable or uh, so. No, it, it wouldn't have succeeded like this. It wouldn't have been curl if it hadn't been open source. And I wouldn't have been rich otherwise because it would have been dead uh, just, you know, a, a year into the project or something. So we how this works is is um, it's maybe not easy, but uh, the curl project is not that complicated. What is complicated is possibly, you know, understanding what curl does. So <laughs> a while ago, I, I did a, a rough uh, check what kind of uh, specifications you need to read up if you want to read up on the protocol details for the protocols that curl supports. And I ended up with these 143 different RFCs. Uh, give or take because there are a few newer ones that's not included here and maybe you could skip some of the ones i don't think anyone has ever read all of these and you don't necessarily need to read all of them but you you know need to be able to find them and go back and check them out if if there's any doubt in it at, at some point in time point in time and what's fun with this huge amount of specification is the num number of words because the number of words in all those rfcs is way more than for example the entire harry potter series or or the lord of the Rings series or even war and peace so that's a lot of specification to read so there's a lot of that you know keeping things in check and, and being aware of how internet protocols and, and stuff works so, so that we can do it the right way. <clears throat> uh, 
and then of course, uh, as I was said and, and, and emphasized, we rely on contributors who are doing things because I, I don't do this alone. Uh, by far, I said already 2,600 in total so far. We are about 50 to 70 persons who actually contribute with things per release. We do releases every eight weeks. So quite a few people involved, even if uh, the number of people in the sort of in the core team, maybe that, who are actually in the project since a few years and have stuck around for the last five or, or years or so, it's fairly small. I mean, that's a handful, maybe a dozen of people who actually stick around long term. Most people just show up, fix the problems, bring their things and, and then uh, fade away again. And all of all, uh, everyone included here are volunteers except for me. I'm the only one who actually have uh, paid a job to work on Curl. I mean, volunteers, as in they voluntarily provide their stuff to the project. I think a lot of those who are volunteering or bringing code are actually paid by someone who, because they use Curl in their job. So they're not volunteer as in working for free, perhaps. I don't know. I usually don't ask people that even so. Um, but they're not sort of they're not paid by the by me by the project or by anyone I work for. The, the curl project is entirely and completely independent in that we are not part of any uh, greater organization. We're not part of you know the GNU or, or or some other foundation. We're not owned by a company where um, we do as we please, and I think that's um, that's a very liberating thing. So we. We don't. We're not. Um, we don't have to obey to anyone's opinions or ways of doing things. We have, we can decide uh, decide entirely by ourselves how we want to do things, and we are old style, open. Everything is public project. We run a lot of things on mailing lists, which is you know we're an old old project, so we do it old style. Even if we're moving more and more over to GitHub, and we are doing things the GitHub way these days. We have issues, pull requests, and we have even discussions. And a set of us, a few, have push rights. So uh, I'm not the only one merging, pushing things in, into the master, but I do most of it. And of course, money-wise, some things in the project actually cost money. So there's the curl project, and we actually, actually have infrastructure. So pretty much what uh, and as I said, I'm, I'm working full time. So it actually works like this, that I have customers or the customers are actually paying for curl support from the company I work for, Wolf SSL. And I work for, I work with for Wolf SSL and we offer customers curl support or contract development or uh, handholding or education or training, anything that is curl related to customers. And they pay Wolf SSL for this. Uh, annual fees and, and contracts and, and whatever. And I get a, a paycheck out of this every month. So I get food on the table. I can support my family and so on. That is how I survive on, on doing curl full time. And of course, I pay for or and manage some of the infrastructure in the project. But at the same time, we have sponsors. And I'll get to some of them in a second. But sponsors are pretty much, you know, putting money to curl there, there we have a few that uh, does it um, recurring and, and, and monthly paying money for, to, to the curl fund uh, some of them are actually paying or uh, supporting the project by paying for infrastructure or uh, you know sponsoring running them and offering the services to us for free for example and um, using using these funds we can actually uh, pay for our bug bounty for example, I get back to that, and we can also pay for some infrastructures, uh, infrastructure stuff, and also things like uh, annual development conferences and stuff like that, stickers and things from the Curl Fund. And recently, uh, you can also sponsor me personally. So that's how we, uh, the money part of of, of Curl works, in, in pretty much. Curl is a separate project for me and from Wolf SSL, but we're all sort of related and uh, associated. So the, this, I mentioned sponsors. So here are the main sponsors of the Curl project in, in March 2022. And as you can see, there aren't that many, uh, quote unquote, big players here. They're mostly smaller companies. And um, 
I love them all and they're great. So thank you. Thanks to them. They're funding a lot of, of infrastructure and, and the bug bounty, as I mentioned. I'll get back to the bug bounty in, in a second, but uh, I just want to emphasize that, sure, I said 10 billion installations. So how do you actually make a, a, an open source project secure enough for all billions of installations? And we're trying to do it basically, you know, do things, uh, well, best practices that we, we should an, adopt and, and work with as we do in the industry really we haven't we don't have any magic silver bullets or anything we're just trying to do everything as good you know all the steps along the way as good as we can can so we do reviews and we write code in a good style in a you know conform and consistent way and we have everything documented so that to help users to use curl properly and to write curl properly and we have a lot of tests and we're trying to do as many tests as possible and use those tests in the CI so that we can verify everything as early as possible. And of course we use Valgrind and, and sanitizers in the CI and we use, every, most of curl is written in C, right? So um, that's sort of, an, yes, it's a nice unsafe language and yada yada, but we're, we're doing our best to make sure to minimize the, the risk with all these tools. So we have yes, static code analyzers and we do uh, non-stop fuzzing on the code to make sure that at least we don't do any basic mistakes. And we did a code audit um, some years ago that also helped sort of harden the code a little bit. So we're at 111 CVEs and counting so far during Carl's 24 years. I think it's fine. It sounds a lot, but it's really not um, considering the time. and. Uh, fingers crossed, we might also have a you know a decaying amount, a lower amount these days than we did before. It looks like that. Looking at stats and and development, it, we might have you know fixed things and and organized code and and procedures to actually be slightly better these days. I hope. I mean, it's hard to know. So when we run uh, CI things in curl nowadays, we have more than one hundred builds and test runs per commit. So we build a lot of different combinations, different third-party dependencies, different operating systems, and we test torture, poke, peek, and everything. And we build on a lot of platforms and a lot of CI for everything to make sure that at least we didn't mess up completely. So it should be fine. And, and once, once we have shipped everything, we have a bug bounty where we say, if you report a security problem to curl, we give you a lot of money in cash for, for having reported that security problem. Uh, I think we say up to $12,000 these days. We have never really paid that much because nobody has uh, reported a problem at that level, but we certainly give away, uh, we have given up to $2,000 and we are slowly trying to raise the amounts that we give away for, for security problems. Mm. And I find that a pretty good way to get people to put in that extra, you know, research into what curl, uh, well, the, that extra effort to, you know, research the code to s try to find, is there a problem here somewhere? So I, I, uh, I am the maintainer. I just, here's a, I told you I do most of the changes. Here's a little graph showing you the, the gray bars here are my, share of the commits during that month over the last 22 years. So as you, as you can see, it's certainly not a majority. Um, well, it is a majority of the commits by number, but as you can see, there's a lot of uh, others too. So I'm at, I think maybe 55% of all the commits in total so far, but there's a lot of people involved. Um, and of course, maintaining and, and being the leader of a project like Curl is a lot more than just uh, writing code. Uh, I wish I could write code more, but of course I have to deal with, as, as I said, security issues. That's a primary thing to do. Doing release management takes quite some time and, and, and we do them every eight weeks, right? And I have to admin a lot of things. So yes, there's a lot of things being informing users and, and the world around us, what we're doing, or what we're up to, what's coming is very important. And of course, being the one who has architectured most of curl, I'm by I'm usually the most suitable one to debug the most hairy things and, and figure out how things work, should work and stuff like that. And I merge a lot of things from that people provide. And, you know, there's a lot of 
lot of things in maintaining an open source project. So apart from uh, driving the code, there's a lot other things that needs to be taken care of. And, and again, Curl is a fairly small project in, in the terms of number of people actually involved. So um, there's a lot of room for me to, to do all of that instead of having someone else to do it because there won't be anyone else to do it. So yeah, I still lead the development. I spend about two hours of spare time um, as I've done for a very long time. And I, nowadays I do it, as I've said, full time since 2019. It, it makes my GitHub, you know, the contribution matrix to be very spread out. I do commits a lot of days. <laughs> uh, this actually made me get this Polham Prize award in 2017 when I got this gold medal from the hands of the Swedish king. That was fun and quite an honor. And of course, one of the challenges when running a, uh, an open source project like Curl is figuring out where do we go from here? And you know, that's one, one thing to, um, even these questions come up all the time, right? We had these questions is constant and we had it since the beginning, which of these different ideas, features, things should we merge to take us somewhere where we should be. And looking forward is really, really hard. It's very easy to look back and see when, when we did mistakes, but it's hard to know where to go. And that takes a lot of going back and forth and, and poking on people and thinking and trying and, and really, it's really hard. And looking back is also easy to get the impression that we actually knew what we were doing when we took the decisions a long time ago. But mm, it's it's hard to predict where we're going and i don't i rarely try to predict where we're going more specifically so my prediction of the future of, it, of where we're going with curl is pretty much like this everything will be network going forward so if if you have anything now that isn't powered it will soon be powered you know tiny things big things your toothbrush your coffee cup your uh, anything that you have in your household surrounding uh, they will soon be powered. And as soon as they are powered, it's very tempting for everyone to make them network. Um, and that is, you know, we see this as this is sort of a constant trend and things are getting networked so that they become more attractive to users so that users will buy your device instead of the other device that isn't networked. And as soon as it is networked, you know, you want it to have internet access on one way or another, even your, you know, bathroom scale or your kitchen blender, they will also have internet access because they want to tweet about it, get uh, firmware updates, uh, get some fancy images, show your recipes or, or exercise uh, instructions, anything. And as soon as you have internet access in your device, Curl is there to help you. So every device you can imagine pretty much will have network access going forward and, and even more devices. So all these new network technologies then combined with all those devices uh, will only drive even more ways of, for people and things to use Curl. And since Curl has offered, um, all right, oh, sorry. And also then another trend is then of course that everything is now offer, offering HTTP APIs so that you can drive everything where, you know, REST style APIs everywhere. And Curl is the universal sort of API consumer debugger uh, that also helps the Curl uh, sort of deployment and development and growth. Um, so yes, and, and libcurl then is there to fulfill those needs. And, and really there aren't that many if you want to go like this, there aren't that many solutions, and especially not that are this old, established, um, proven, and open source, and runs on all these different platforms. There are many different alternatives to curl, of course, different alternatives, command line, many different uh, alternatives for libraries too, especially if you go with different languages, you can go with, you know, the Java one, the Python ones, and the stuff like that. So there are certainly alternatives, but not if you want to go on all those different platforms and, and have this uh, API like that. So my prediction for, for Curl is pretty much like this. And this is not only a prediction, it's more like the roadmap. We have got more Curl stuff over time going forward as well as pretty much as we have been doing for, for the last 20 years. I would say that even the, the, the development pace has only been 
getting faster actually over the last five years. So yes, it really never gets done, even if people like to ask me that question every once in a while. So when are you ever done with this? Because everything keeps moving. Open source is going to be there. And yes, everyone can join in a hub. So then I wanted to just, yeah, that's sort of where we came from, how things work and, and where we might go in the future. So what have we done recently? I, as I mentioned in the beginning, I wanted to, my my first my first idea was that I should give you some fun command lines that we've made possible the last few years because curl has this um, a lot of users of curl are using a curl that is slightly older so a lot of people are are missing out features that we've done recently because they're using you know they're using a CentOS installation that was actually bringing a curl from nine years ago. And sure, curl worked fine nine years ago as well, but we've done things recently. So I put together a little slide here showing what we've done to curl visible for users of the command line tool. And, and these are only changes we've done over the last four years. How much can that be? I, I started out thinking. So first, of course, might not affect that many users, but we actually added support for the Gopher S protocol, which is Gopher over TLS. But one of the more major things that is going on in the world today is HTTP 3 support, which we added. And that's experimental, so you have to enable it, uh, you know, manually when you build curls. So a lot of users don't have this enabled anyway, because of many reasons. Uh, that's a completely different story. Uh, I'll skip that now. We also added support for MQTT, and we have support for this uh, new HTTP compression standard. So that those are basically pretty much just working um, when you use those uh, URLs. And, and, and if you don't, you won't notice them. But anyway, and we have extended this uh, dash W option quite a lot. The dash W is, um, is a feature you really should investigate if you're using the current command line. It's a way to extract information from, from, from a transfer uh, in a really practical way you basically have a lot of variables and information from the transfer deck and you can easily output with the curl command line for example you know headers and and response code and and the lots of, of different metadata from the transfer and then we added things for for, for a protocol like we added all service support which is a way to switch between servers in the HTTP way. And we added HSTS support, which is a way for, to curl to avoid going clear text HTTP when the site tells curl to it should use HTTPS instead. We added support for uh, AWS authentication. Uh, well, V4 signature, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember the full name, but that's the uh, command line option name for it. We've added this, this is brand new, remove an error, which means if curl fails, uh, when transferring a file, it should remove it and not leave any leftovers or, or you know, truncated files on disk after it returns. And we added this aggressive way to retry errors when you use the command line. And you know, four years is a long time. Four years is even within the scope when when TLS 1.3 started to become really uh, widely used. So we added support for a better way to select TLS 1.3 ciphers and also when you're using the proxy an HTTPS proxy you can do that we you can design the, this allow username use in in URLs like that and and here's one fun thing you can uh, here's a shortcut to send JSON easier and better with the curl command line tool JSON I'll, I'll get back to that in a second you can also tell curl to not overwrite a file uh, you can run, you can do, and here's a pretty big one actually, parallel because it lets you do a huge amount of transfers in parallel, concurrently, uh, simultaneously using the command line tools. You can, you know, I want to download 20 files at the same time uh, and it'll do that. It can actually do pretty much any amount of, of transfers in parallel. We added support for DOE, DNS over HTTPS. You can do e tags instead of, um, so you can do conditional requests with the current curl command line tools. You know, I want to download this content if it has changed. Uh, you don't have to do that based on the just the date anymore. You can do it based on e tag, which is the HTTP way to pretty much ask for 
uh, only get the new content if it has changed. You can now also make curl fail, or that is return failure if there's a um, non-200 return code, basically. And you can make that still output the response body, which curl couldn't do before. And we added support for, for the HA proxy protocol, which is useful for those using, um, well, forward proxies. No, no uh, sorry, reverse proxies, um, yeah. If you know what a HA proxy is, uh, HA proxy protocol, you'll, you'll like that. So a lot of things. And I wanted to just go back and emphasize in particular uh, these ones. So JSON being a, a very popular format for structured data these days, and it's becoming, I, I'd say, maybe even more popular uh, uh, as time goes. We, we added support for this, um, this Dash dash JSON is out since a while, the most recent release. Uh, that's a way to make it easier to send the JSON with curl. Curl doesn't understand JSON itself, but it provides this option to make it easier to send JSON with the right headers and everything. And the other, the variables on the left on this slide for the dash W option makes it uh, offers way to output data or information. Uh, in JSON format. So you can pass that on to, for example, JQ or another JSON aware tool that you want to parse or extract data with. Basically, we've, we're acknowledging that JSON is a popular thing. It's growing and it's, it's probably here to stay. So we're making it easier for everyone who's using JSON to integrate, well, to do more JSON easier with curl. Uh, there, I'm sure that we might even have reason to do even more JSON, JSON me things going forward. I just wanted to sort of point this out to you because a lot of things happen in curl and a lot of things, of course, go under the radar from for a lot of people, especially then because, as I said, 247 command line options. Of course, uh, whatever, whenever we add a command line option, it goes into that you know universe, that haystack of options. How do you find the ones you actually want to use and are actually interested in. So a lot of things have happened even only the, during the last four years. So there's certainly a lot of things happening. And if you want to get uh, on, on learn, know every, everything about curl, uh, here's this little book online that you should go and check out. It might not have the most recent options and everything documented, but we're getting to it over time. So it's an attempt to really clarify and document everything that there is to know about curl the command line tool the library the project everything and of course everything of this is open source even that book even the whole project you can help uh, this is open source it's the result of our sort of combined efforts that we're we're all using trying uh, and, and playing with and that's what i wanted to say today so thank you for uh, for listening to this i hope uh, i've um, shared some things that you didn't know before. And I'm happy to answer to any questions really, to curl or whatever you have, you wanna throw at me.